The six best horror movies set in a movie theater. This is Nerdist Now. We were all just about ready to go back to movie theaters with reckless abandon when some kind of non-Loki variant got in the way. What? Now we're back to being terrified of the cinema for public health reasons. But there's a long cinematic history of horror movies that take place within the hallowed halls of a movie theater, and those are way more fun. The new Uruguayan film The Last Matinee is a gory throwback to 80s style slashers, all set in a nearly empty old theater. It's a lot of fun and put us in the mind of other such screamers where blood and shock mix with the flicker of the projector. Here are six of our favorites. First, we have two Two honorable mentions, the Disney Channel original movie Phantom of the Megaplex and the much scarier Are You Afraid of the Dark episode The Tale of the Midnight Madness. For many 90s kids, Are You Afraid of the Dark was our first foray into horror and The Tale of the Midnight Madness from the second season not only gave us a fright, it also introduced us to the idea of midnight movies and a pretty great representation of F.W. Murnau's Nosferatu. A movie so scary the vampire comes off the screen. We're gonna see a lot of blurring of fantasy and reality on this list and it's awesome a Canadian kid show was able to pull it off for a younger audience. We also love that this episode features recurring character Dr. Fink. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Fink, I apologize. Now, on to the list. The Tingler. First up, we have a classic from the inimitable showman of schlock, William Castle, and his 1959 Ode to the Power of Fright. Vincent Price, the great one, plays a doctor who realizes the chilly tingle people feel in their spine when they're scared is actually a tiny creature, which he calls the Tingler. This parasite feeds off of people's fear and will eventually kill them if they don't let the tension out. Screaming, of course, is the only way to do this. Castle's whole bag was putting gimmickry into the actual movie theater to really scare the kids who bought tickets. The Tingler's amazing gimmick was Percepto, a process wherein the audience could feel what the characters felt. In practice, this was just putting some joy buzzers under some of the theater seats. In the movie signature scene, the tingler itself gets loose in a movie theater. The lights go out, and the buzzers in your actual cinema would buzz. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not panic, but scream, scream for your lives. The tingler is loose in this theater. Castle would also pay an actor to pretend to have a heart attack in the audience and a second actor to play the nurse rushing to his aid. It was a whole thing and we love it. Messiah of Evil. One of the most underrated horror movies of the 1970s, this film from co-writers and co-directors Willard Hoyk and Gloria Katz explores the sleepy California town of Point Doom. Get it? Like, like doom? Which is slowly overtaken by an evil force, which turns the residents into vampires who descend on any and all outsiders. There are a lot of scary scenes in this movie, including one where a woman is chased through a supermarket. But for our purposes, Messiah of Evil has an amazingly scary scene in a movie theater. At one point, one of our heroines goes to see a movie by herself. The Marquis says, kiss tomorrow goodbye, fittingly. Hardly anyone is in the theater, but as she watches, we start seeing more and more people fill in surrounding her. They're all vampires, obviously, and she eventually notices her fellow patrons are bleeding eating from the eyes and mouth. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. The Blob. When it initially came out in 1958, The Blob was a perfect blend of Cold War science fiction and silly gooey monster movie. Steve McQueen plays a kid in a small town who happens upon a meteorite, which just so happens to contain an unstoppable growing mass of red gelatin, which engulfs anyone and anything it comes across. It was a red scare movie, obviously, but it had an amazing scene in a movie theater in which a midnight horror screening is ruined by The Blob. Cut to 30 years later, director Chuck Russell and writer Frank Darabont remade the movie and upped the gore factor by about a million percent. <laughs> While it changed a lot from the original, it kept the attack on the movie theater. Only this time it was enormous and even grotier. There's nothing quite like a giant gross monster to make people run away in panic. Don't yell fire in a crowded theater, but also don't yell blob, mostly because people won't know what you're talking about and might think you're yelling for someone named Bob. Popcorn! If you want a horror movie that takes place almost entirely in a movie theater, then look no further than the oft-forgotten early 90s flick, Popcorn. It has one of the best taglines ever, buy a bag, leave in a box. Really more of a disincentive. It follows a group of film students and their professor, who in order to save their underfunded department, decide to put on an all-night horror movie marathon. To make it more fun, they employ all the William Castle-esque techniques they can get. Zappy chairs, odorama, puppets and stuff. Unfortunately, one of the movies they find in the old theater is the work of an infamous director named Lanyard Gates, who killed his family on stage as the final act of his movie many years ago. The panic led to a fire in the theater and several other deaths. They should have yelled blob. Now, as the night of ridiculous horror movie parodies commences, someone is picking off the students one by one. Could it be Lanyard Gates' ghost? I'll never tell. <laughs> but no, it isn't, because ghosts aren't real. 
Matinee, and Gremlins, and other Joe Dante movies. We love Joe Dante here at Nerdist, director of some of the best, most fun horror and sci-fi movies of all time, and yet he's still vastly underrated. In 1993, he directed Matinee, a love letter to the William Castles of the world. John Goodman plays a horror movie director and schlock purveyor who brings his latest movie, the sci-fi disaster epic Mant, to a little theater in Florida, near a military base, right on the brink of possible nuclear war with Cuba. Duck and cover paranoia mixed with good old-fashioned carnival thrills, all in service of cinema. The best thing about it is everybody's fine! No one dies in this movie, it's PG rated, I think. But this isn't the only time Dante has gone to the movies. In Gremlins, the titular critters, after destroying most of the town, go see Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. In Gremlins 2, the new batch, there's a meta moment where the Gremlins get in the actual film and Hulk Hogan stands up to complain to the projectionist. And then later, Leonard Maltin gets killed by the Gremlins because he didn't like the first Gremlins movie. Man, Gremlins 2 is outstanding. Demons. Probably our favorite of these movies. This uber gory Italian movie from 1985 has major pedigree attached. Directed by Lamberto Bava, son of the legendary Mario Bava, Demons was also produced by Dario Argento, has music by Goblin's Claudio Simonetti, and co-stars Cemetery Man director Michele Suave, whose first film's director was Stage Fright, a movie about a slasher attacking the cast and crew of an avant-garde play, theaters. Demons takes place almost entirely inside a renovated old cinema house in Berlin on premiere night for a brand new horror movie. One of the things on display in the theater is a chrome demon mask that's held by a mannequin in kendo gear on the back of a motocross bike. I don't get it either. A curious moviegoer playfully puts on what is obviously a cursed object and turns into a demon herself. During the movie, she infects audience members in gruesome ways and the curse spreads, turning the crowd into horrifying ghouls that spew green goo and have glowing yellow eyes that look like headlights. An infection? Spreading through a theater? <laughs> a little bit far-fetched. <laughs> the movie goes off the rails very quickly, and it gets incredibly gory. It also features the great Bobby Rhodes, who might be in contention for Screendom's best facial hair. And there you have it. Some random assortment of horror movies and horror TV shows set in and around movie theaters. We love going to see movies, especially scary ones, so everybody please be safe and healthy when you make your way back there. Leave the horrors up on the screen. But tell us, what are your favorite scary movies set in movie theaters? Are there any we missed? Let us know in the comments below, and for everything else in the Venn diagram of fun and spooky, keep devouring Nerdist.com.